This is a lesson on adding decimals. So the steps for adding decimals are almost exactly the same as adding any number, whether it has a decimal or not. So we practiced adding four digit numbers to four digit numbers earlier. And um, this is going to be almost identical. The only thing is that um, in step one, when you write the larger number on top of the smaller number, what you need to make sure is that you align the decimals. So they need to be one on top of the other, lined up. Okay, now that, if you do that, then that will mean that the ones places are lined up, the tens places are lined up, the hundreds. Same with on the other side, the uh, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. They will all line up as long as your decimals are aligned. Okay, next thing that you need to do is fill in the missing places with zeros. Now I'll show you what I mean by that um, when we get to the examples. Um, step three, you add each column of numbers just as you would if there was no decimal. Um, and then at the end, you need to make sure that in your answer you have a decimal and that that decimal lines up underneath the other decimals in the problem. Okay, and so think of it like buttons on a shirt. You want all of those buttons to line up in a straight vertical line, and you want your decimals to line up just the same. So let's do a couple of examples together. You'll write yours along with, my, along with me. Um, so the first one is 2 and 5, 4, 5, plus 6 and 5, 9. Okay, so first thing we need to do is write the decimals one on top of the other. So... Oh, hang on a second. Here we go. Two and five, four, five. Now the decimal is right here. So that means we put it right underneath the other decimal. And there's a six to the left of the decimal. There's a five. And there's a nine. Okay, so that's what we need to make sure of is the decimals are lined up. They are aligned. Okay, the second uh, thing that we needed to do is said was um, put zeros in, how was it phrased? In the missing places. Okay, the missing place here, after the nine, there's nothing. We just imagine a zero. That doesn't change the number uh, at all. It's still six uh, and five, nine, and that's it. Okay, then the next thing you need to do is add it up. Now, I know that my decimal needs to go right here at the end. So I could even write it before I start adding. Um, so we just add like normal. So 5 plus 0 is 5. 9 plus 4 is 13. So we still put the 1 up here and the 3 down here. 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11. So we put the 1 over here and a 1 down here. And then 6 plus 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So my answer is 9 and 1, 3, 5. Um, okay, so and you'll notice that the adding wouldn't have changed if we had decimals there or not. It just changes the value of the answer, right? If I did not have a, a decimal, this would be 9,135. So it's very important that you put the decimal in once you get your answer because this is 9 and 135. So it's quite a bit smaller of a number. Now the next one we will try. So the first number, or I guess the larger number, is 145 or 145 and 3. And the other one is 2 and 389. So my decimal has to go right underneath here. That means that 2 is directly to the left of the decimal, lined up under the 5. The 8, I mean the 3, sorry, there's a 3 there, goes underneath this other 3. And then we've got an 8 and a 9 after. Notice on this side there are numbers um, hanging over the ledge sort of on here. And on this side there's, there's numbers that don't have matchups here. And that's okay. Um, we can just put zeros in to make it easier to think about. 
and then we can add them together. So I'm going to go 9 plus 0 is 9, 8 plus 0 is 8, 3 plus 3 is 6, that 0 comes down and it's right there, then 5 plus 2 is 7, and then 14 isn't adding anything so it stays the same. So there's my answer. Now if I wanted to um, estimate to see if my answer is reasonable, then I would estimate to the nearest whole number, so in this category here, and that would be 145 plus 2, oops, some of this isn't working, which would equal 147. And look at that, they are uh, the same whole numbers, just the decimal is different, so I know my answer is reasonable. Okay, so um, here's the practice. There's two other questions. So please um, pause the video and then play again once you're ready to see the answers. All right, so now that you've finished, let's see what we've got here. Um, the second number in this is larger, so we should just always good practice to put the larger number on top. Because once we get to subtracting decimals in the next lesson, it's going to be very important that you put the larger number on top. Okay, so that's 65 and, and 2, 3. Then the other decimal goes right underneath this decimal. There's a 4 to the left of it and a 6 to the right. And then we've also got a 5 and a 1 here. So we can add these together. I can put my 0 in for a space filler. And I can get my answer here of 69 and 881. So that's my answer there. If I wanted to estimate to make sure that I got it right, uh, this number would estimate 65. This one would estimate 2 at 5. And I would end up with 70. Okay, and I can tell that this is reasonable because if I were to round this number, it would end up being 70. Okay, and last one here. Um, we've got the larger number is 724 and 93. And then over here we've got 0 decimal 625. So the decimal again lines up right underneath. We put the 0 on that side and 625 on this side. And then we simply add them together. Okay. Oh, maybe we could put that filler zero in so that it doesn't trick us. So 5 plus 0 is 5. 3 plus 2 is 3. I mean 5. <laughs> 9 plus 6 is 15. Carry the 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. Uh, and then 7 and 2 have nothing to add to. And don't forget to put the zero in between. Look at all those fives. Okay, so our answer is 725 and 555. All right. Um, your assignment then is page 202 to 203, numbers 1 to 6. Now, when it tells you to use different strategies like um, base 10 blocks or to just explain your strategy, ignore that. You don't need to do that. Just focus on this one strategy. It's the easiest one, and it's probably one of the quickest ones.